go. Voltron Network. We are live. What's good, guys? Welcome back to Talking at the Movies. I'm Eddie Reese Antonio. And I am Cooler Mo. Yes, guys. Don't forget, I'm going to do this at the beginning now, instead of the yeah. end. Because maybe you actually listen this time. Please give us a review. Go to iTunes. Give us five stars. Show us some love. Go YouTube and give us a subscribe and a thumbs up on the Voltron Network. Two separate words. It has Oops. been a while, yeah. Yeah, man, it helps us out. And always forget when it comes to the end, because yeah. we get so tired. And you know, you know what? We, we always say iTunes, but if you listen on other platforms, give us a review then. Let us know, and, and, and we'll read it out. Always forget that there are other platforms that you can actually do reviews yeah. from. What? Uh, what, 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 what? Stitcher and all of those ones? There's, yeah. Do you know what? I was listening to, to somebody else's podcast, and they were breaking down their... Um, their metrics as to their download so obviously the apple podcast app was like the most popular but after that i was, I was quite surprised stitcher apparently was mm. kind of next up as, as being quite popular place to listen stitcher is getting big they're buying everybody and, out and spotify apparently was in their top three yeah another one spotify yeah they're really yeah. getting big as well but guys so get on another week and it's been all oh, it's weird I, I feel bad about complaining about this more because especially in this country, we're so used to the crappy weather. Oh, so hot. It's calm it down was now. too hot. Do you know what I mean? It was so hot. Um, there, there is a pic. I'll put it on our Instagram page. There is a picture of Daisy lying on her back uh, in front of the fan, just oh. like just giving up. <laughs> you actually put the fan on. Oh, we had oh, to. Mercy. And the worst thing is, I actually ordered a new fan that was supposed to come today um, and still hasn't arrived, so it's been delayed. But it's one of those ones, just, you know, with a big circle. And you just, the one I have, because it's just such a narrow opening, it's fucking horrible. (laughs) Was it metal? Because I find that the plastic ones don't really do the job. I have no idea. It was like about 30 odd quid. Well, that's probably plastic then. Yeah. But, uh, But yeah, the weather's gone now. It's all thunderstorms now from here on in. It is, so I'll have to, I probably won't have assembled the new fan until like next year. Next year, bloody hell. Ah, <laughs> oh, guys, oh, as well, before we get into it, original versus remake, it's back. We've got the Evil Dead episode came out yesterday, well, two days from now, whenever I upload this. So go give that a check out. That was a controversial one. Me and Mo were at loggerheads, opposite ends. I did. I actually watched a bit of it last night just to remind myself, and I, I completely forgot that your... Um, that your, your choice was just, was just right. your, your opinion was just so was, insane. Was right. The, the true, yeah. if you're honest with yourself and you put nostalgia and public opinion aside, my, my opinion was the true. That, that's right what way. a Donald Trump supporter says when they go to vote. <laughs> 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 so we know what you are. <laughs> oh, well, it's been happening. We've been watching. What have you I haven't watched it a lot because I, I was it was saying, too hot. Yeah. So I haven't actually, yeah, I haven't actually watched that much this week. Um, I did get, I did get one movie in, um, and it was a good one. It was The Way of the Dragon with Bruce Lee. Oh, old school. Which one was this old one? Old school. This is the Italian yeah. one. This is the Italian oh, one. Oh, with uh, Chuck Norris. That, that with fight. Chuck Norris, um, an absolutely beautiful lead actress, and um, what I really found fascinating about this is if you watch, say, something like. Um, Jackie Chan films that are filmed in like foreign countries, like say uh, Spain, where they did um, a Wheels on Meals or Meals on Wheels. Um, they they don't they just completely ignore the fact that there is a language barrier and everyone is talking the same language. Whereas in like Where the Dragon, there is actually an attempt that Bruce Lee can't understand Italian. Yeah, you actually get the sense of him being this isolated foreigner in this country. Yeah, absolutely. Um, some great comedy in it. Um, some absolutely fantastic fight stuff the the stuff with um chuck norris at the end is great you kind of think wow that's kind of brutal um again um you know bruce lee has just killed <laughs> cool <somebody>. yeah. <laughs> this challenged him to a nice friendly yeah. sparring match it's a little fight and what he broke, broke what did he stamp on it or was it the, no the, i think he um he, he basically breaks him like yeah. basically breaks Gilles his him. neck it's the yeah show, yeah Mm. Just, uh, but a really, really cool film. Actually, I, I do like the idea of um, he's gone to Italy to help, like his cousin or whatever it is, um, basically against these thugs. And the fact that they managed to have that fight with Chuck Norris in the freaking Coliseum, if I'm right, yeah, yeah that was crazy. You wouldn't be yeah. able to do that nowadays. So I was kind of thinking, wow, man, I, that's I wouldn't have thought they would let a film crew um, anywhere near um, a place like that. Hey man, back in those days, up until the 70s, they were just people could just wander all over the place. 
Well, I, I guess back then it, it's probably a tourism thing, right? Because now you've got like the likes of YouTube and stuff and you can post all these professional videos. That would probably be like, I'd like to go to Italy, I think, for a holiday after watching that. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Because even back then, like I'd see photos from like seven, people could just wander up to the pyramids and just climb all over the bloody things and take their little souvenirs of whatever they find. <laughs> now, you, you, yeah, you've got to pay off the security guards to get that close and climb up, which I'm definitely doing whenever I go first for the first time in Egypt. I've never been. I don't care if there's a war, I must see the pyramids before I die. It has to be done. What, you're going to pay off the security guards so you can climb it? Yep. I will do. Come on, how many people get to do that? <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm not entirely sure I would want to be um, ruining those... those um, Wait, what, ru you're not going to ruin it by climbing it. Just the granite. <laughs> I'm not talking about taking stuff away. Yeah. Want to find like that secret entrance and go in and, and do some like treasure hunting. Yeah. Would you go? Would you actually go in if you had, if there was like a if one security guard goes like you know fifty dollar, mm. show you secret entrance. Oh, I would I'd be a little scared. <laughs> <laughs> what are you trying to set me up for? You can't. You don't know, man. You can't trust it. Uh, but uh, go on. What did um, you check? So, oh, so what do you uh, rate? Oh, right. It, it, it's a real fun film, right? Um, it, it's amazing. There's, there's, between the three films I've seen, there's no real drop in quality. Um, so I'll, I'd easily give that. A, it, it's a four-star film, right? It's, and when I say it's a four-star film, I don't put it up against like a Scorsese. I yeah, put yeah, it up yeah. against like other martial art films of, of the era. And, and, and it's easily a really enjoyable film. It's original, man. You have to have the extra respect for those original bruce lee's yeah. that changed the game it it's just makes you think and because obviously this one was he had a lot more input on this and it just makes you think man if, if he had hadn't died just how much more genius would have come out from him problem with that is if he didn't die we wouldn't have gotten jackie yeah, jackie was around uh, but yeah. he got his break because they needed a new star which that vacuum was left by bruce yep. and you, wouldn't have got an opportunity you would hope they would want more than one star. <laughs> you, that, when does that ever work out? <laughs> Terrible. Yeah. Um, so I also checked out more episodes of Dark. Oh, so you've probably overtaken me now. No, I think I'm only like episode three or four. And okay. while I'm really enjoying it, right, it is a complete head fuck. I am completely confused as to <laughs> what the fuck is going on. Have you not done what I told you? No, it's not the people that that's confusing me because I know who everyone is. It's just like the different alternate realities now. Trying to keep that in your head is, is quite difficult because you kind of got you got used to who was with who, yeah. who lived where, who was shagging who, and then all of a sudden in this alternate, it's different. Yeah, yeah that's true. And then there's those lot yeah. that are back in the past, like deep in the past. Yeah. And the guy who's the hero is turning out to be the villain. Yeah, but we kind of don't know why or how yet. Um, and Agnes, Agnes is turning out to be like a complete psycho bitch. Mm. No, is it Agnes or Ignis? I can't remember her name now. You know, um, in, in the in the norm, the pregnant one, yeah, in the normal timeline, she obviously um, steals or is having an affair with Ulrich. Yeah, and then then in the alternate timeline, she's now actually living with him. Um, and um, his wife is now out, not out of the picture, but she's obviously living elsewhere. Mm -hmm. And then she realizes that Ulrich is having an affair on her and she goes all psycho mode. Yeah, she was always crazy. Yeah. Always yeah. was. Like, once a cheer, yeah. always a cheer, yeah. and she's always been crazy, so. Mm. Yeah. Or, or, or Jonas, right? Like, comes to the realization that he was never born in this time, in, in this alternate reality. Yeah, that's got to be it. That is so crazy, seeing your mum. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mom, yeah. Who the fuck are you? Get away from me. <laughs> Just such brilliant, brilliant writing. Yeah, I've got, I've got to jump back into yeah. that. Now that the weather's better, I'll probably be able to feel comfortable to actually watch it now. What I'm really worried about is, I think I've only got like six episodes, because it's a shorter season, it's only eight episodes. I'm really worried that there's going to be no satisfactory like wrap-up, because there's just so much going on still. Possibly. Possibly. Uh, we'll see, we'll see. Um, and then last night, um, so I mentioned it before we started recording, um, for some bizarre reason, I wanted to check out Crunchyroll. I would logged in for ages. I had actually cancelled my account when the lockdown happened. You know, I looked through mm. everything I was paying for and started just cancelling things. And um, they actually have a free tier. Yeah, they uh, always had, but there's, there's yeah, ads. Yeah. The ads every... You know what? 
it's, it's actually it's no, well, it's not that bad. It it's, is. Um, it's the same it, ads as well, all, all over again, over and over again. No, they have actually improved it. Because I, I remember having a free subscription watch quite a while ago, and you're right, it was the same ad over and over again. So, so you get full screen, 1080p, beautiful, crisp looking playback. Um, you do get ads, but the, the the ads are about a minute long. So in that minute bit, you get like four ads or something, and you essentially get. Uh, a, a short ad, one like a, it's only a few seconds right at the beginning, and then I think it's three slots of one minute each, mm. which which was actually wasn't bad at all because it gives you a phone break. You can pick up your phone, have a quick play with your phone, and, and put it back down. And I was like, "Oh, this is really interesting." So I started checking out Mob Psycho season two. Oh, I th- oh I've still got. A, oh, it's yeah. the headache of just going somewhere to find it. Crunchy, either. just do it, Crunchyroll, man. It's it's there. It, it, it's the easiest thing. It's free. What more do you want? You've got, to, you've got to watch a few ads, but they're just ads for other shows on the network. They're not even actual ads. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's the point. That's the point. So how yeah. many of um, Mob Psycho you watch? Season two? Um, so I only watched the... Uh, so I had seen episode one before, but I thought, I haven't seen it for such a long time. Let me start again, because I think I'd only seen one episode. Yeah. Um, and I was well into it, right? So I know this weekend, over the next few days, I'll be watching like episode after episode. Okay, okay. Yeah, I've got to get back into that. <laughs> Love me some more cycle. That was too good I, that I, first season. Yeah, I know. I'm so surprised that it's actually taken me this long to get back to it. But it's the same with One Punch Man. You know, I've never done season two yet. No, neither have I, actually. What, what's wrong with us, Mom? <laughs> These are great shows. Like, why haven't you not watched them? I'm, I'm going to actually check, because I also checked out an episode of Steins Gate on Funimation, because after watching that, I thought, let me check out what the Funimation offering is like for free. Mm. And... Um, I don't know if they were having a glitch last night, but I watched an episode of Steinsgate and there were no ads Ooh. at all. Okay, okay. Which, which must be a glitch. And funnily enough, um, I hear, um, you know, like Warner Brothers are going through um, cost cutting and stuff. Yeah. They're looking to sell Crunchyroll. Ooh, they're and really Sony, yeah, cutting everything. They I think, are. Um, and, and Sony apparently seemed to be the front runner. So that could be very interesting, right? You could essentially have all anime on one platform, which might actually make it worth subscribing to if you get basically everything for, for one cheap subscription. Yeah. That could be goodbye to some of that free tier stuff, though. It's Sony, man. They are they can get greedy. When well, like I said, well, no, I mean, they, they own Funimation, and there, there is a free tier on there as well. Yeah, but that was when they were oh, competing yeah. with yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. Now right, they haven't right, got that. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's enough on its own, a proper little streaming service there. Mm. Well, they could do it, like, if, if you're accessing it from the PlayStation 5, you get free tier. <laughs> true, 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 true. Huh? It's like we may have like little uh, anime amateurs, little mini episodes coming our way, guys. <laughs> Why not? Do you know what? Like as 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 I was browsing through their catalog, this is what one thing I do like about anime. They just have an anime for every occasion and every yes. mood. The ones I just don't get are the ones which like cooking. Like the show is based on cooking. You don't like slice of life, do you? I see. I love slice of life anime. Like anime food. Yeah, I, yeah. I'm not really. I need. A, I need a, a hook, like a crazy hook, like the last son of something. You need something like the three-breasted woman with like claws coming there out. There you go. There you go. Got lasers. There and... you go. That's what I need. Yeah. That's what I need. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, and, and the only other things I've been watching are things like uh, Community, um, It's Always Sunny, uh, watch the two-part high school reunion episode, which is just that's oh, <laughs> it's got one of my favorite favorite bits um, of all time. Um, it's the bit where they essentially do a dance off, mm. and in their minds they're doing this ultimate ultimate dance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah well, whereas in actual fact <laughs> they're not. This is, the, this is the season with um, Fat Mac as well, isn't it? Yes. Oh, yes. And uh, literally, I've just finished that season and gone to the next season. So you go from Fat Mac, literally, like the next episode, back to like it is insane how how the shape he managed to get himself in. Like I think he said he just ate cookies and ice cream in order to get out of shape. But how he managed to pull himself back so quick within like I don't know a few months. That is that's some serious dedication. Serious dedication. Cannot be healthy. So what else? That um, um, obviously, and, and just TNG episodes, and obviously we're going to talk about it in more depth this week's episode of Lower Decks. Yeah, we'll get to that. Um, not much for me. 
Um, I did check out Sputnik. Remember that trailer you watched a few oh, weeks ago? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The Russian version of Aliens. Yep. Um, very well shot, very well acted. But not a great film. Oh, oh. I, thought, I thought that's where you were heading when you were saying, when you're commenting on the acting and the, sh- and the direction. Yeah, it, it all looks good. It's all presented really well. The effects yeah. are really good. Like, Russia, they're stepping up. They're actually, yeah. this is Hollywood level here. But sadly, it's just, uh, for me, it's just dull for the most part. Like, the last 10, 15 minutes, you know, that's good. And it ain't like I just want explosions and action shit. Like, you know, what we would usually take the piss out of Sodom for. But most of the time, it's just people just talking in military bases about controlling this alien. This guy comes back to Earth. It's kind of like Venom, really. This guy comes back to Earth. He's uh, on the Sputnik original um, space exploration thing. And he brings something with him. And he's like this symbiotic alien that comes out of him at night when he passes out. And it just crawls around and just does whatever it does and then crawls back in him. And they want to try and control this. Typical military, want to use it as a weapon sort of thing. But so many possibilities where they could have gone with it. Could have been so cool. It could have been like a Venom thing. Yeah. It could have almost been like this anti-hero yeah. or villain thing. But yeah, it just ends up being this dull drama. People just talking in hallways. Oh dear. So one to avoid then. Yeah, I, I wasn't. Yeah, I wasn't. Wasn't great. What was that sci-fi movie that came out a couple of years ago, that was really good. But the, do you remember it? I think it was up for the Oscars. Oh, I mean, you're talking about Arrival? Arrival, yeah. I think it was trying to be like that. Good, like, growing up sci-fi. Oh. Like, that was really good. But, yeah, no, not quite. So, two stars, maybe two and a half. Ooh. Yeah. Not great, not great. And uh, anything else? Be watching more of that Motherland Fort Salem. I'm really enjoying watching it. <laughs> like, it's just the... Uh, the show, but I don't know. I kind of like it. I kind of like it. I kind of enjoy it. Which is in the military. I don't know. It's a funny hook, are, are these, different. Are, are, are you enjoying it because these are sexy witches? Uh, it's, they, don't, they don't really play that up that much because yeah. they are in like full on uniforms and stuff, but yeah. it's, it's all right. It's, it's enjoyable. I like it. And that's pretty easy much, watch. Easy watch, exactly. Background watch. So that's pretty much it. So let's get into uh, what we got. Trailer, one trailer. We got one trailer. Are we going to do? Are we leaving Star Trek Lower Decks till the end? We're going to do it now. Oh come, on, let's do Lower Decks then. Should we do Lower Decks? You're on your own with this one, Mo, because I'm. Uh, I was actually watching this thinking, do I want to keep on watching this? Because that female character is annoying. She was a lot more. So Mariner was a lot more calmed down this week. I found her way more annoying this week. Oh, Amen. Eddie, 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 Eddie. It's well, you've got to remember, so, so, so if you actually remember, when I started watching Rick and Morty, I watched one episode and, and gave up on it. And then he went back because he go, no, 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 watch it because it gets better. Mm. So these things, they do take a few episodes to get going. But I actually really enjoyed it. I thought it was full of some of like the, some absolutely great references, some really funny lines like where... Um, where Rutherford's trying to be uh, pretending to see what it'd be like to work in the sick bay. And he's like, those are dilithium burns. How are you still alive? I know, but it just, I, just, I don't know what it is. It just doesn't make me laugh. It just doesn't do it for me. It doesn't get that, the humor just doesn't find that. It's that, the Star that Wars fanboy in you. It don't, because there's plenty of other stuff that does. Oz, oh, Orville, Orville. That is basically, you know, we know it's a Star Trek ripoff. But it does it well, and when it's funny, it's legit funny. And also, uh, I'm disappointed this, in you, Eddie. I this, thought you had doesn't... like good quality. I, I know, I know, you let the side down when you were raving about. Um, oh shit! What's that? What's that show about the 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 robots in the park that you paid to go and uh, shag? <laughs> oh, <laughs> robots! How many, in the park how many shows about robots that people go? What, what's the, what's the, they? What's the fuck? I've completely forgot the name what of the show the, now. That makes no sense. <laughs> what the robots in the park in the resort? Robots in the resort. You pay yeah, Westworld. You know, Westworld. That's it. Yeah. How can you even compare <laughs> Lower Decks to Westworld? Well, one's that good, ter- one's really bad. <laughs> That's a terrible pitch. Robots <laughs> in the park. You pay Lower Decks is really good. And and um... are you insane? Westworld is great. That's like oh, premium. Was, was premium terrible. TV. Oh, you're crazy. Terrible. You are crazy. Terrible. You are so crazy. 
So, so I, are you done? Are you not going to? I'll, uh, I'll still force myself to watch a couple more, see, look just, at just to make you happy. <laughs> just to make you happy more, because I'm a given person. A whole, a whole twenty six minutes of your life will be spent watching a show you don't like. I need to need something on to help me like fall asleep in the middle of the day when I'm <laughs> a nap. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. So, so you're not. So you don't find the. So, so the whole style is not gelling with you. You're not. Um, you're not I interested like, in, in. I like in the, all the animation. The yeah. I like the animation. I like that it's set in the Star Trek world. I do actually like that, but I just yeah. don't find it funny, and I find that that lead female character is annoying. She does my head in. Really, I actually I, I found that they 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 calmed her down a lot more, um, and she seems um, she seems like a very very sort of. Um, good foil to to the other character so you've kind of got one who's straight laced and the other one who likes to cause trouble maybe and, she was you know, an alien you. maybe she was an alien or a robot or something it would have made it a little more better but i don't know i don't know why but maybe just that dynamic of it maybe would have worked well better, technically but. they're all aliens right <laughs> she she's an alien to other people uh to like aliens. Kling- yeah, exactly. Yeah, a, a Klingon, a Klingon will think she's an alien. Oh, not think she is an alien to Klingons. Why not? Yeah, so technically we're all aliens at that point. Okay, okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, Lower Decks. Oh, oh I'll fall some way through it. Um, guys, listen, some of you must be watching Lower Decks. I want to hear what you guys think. Am I wrong? Am I crazy? Is Mo the, the truth here? Is he the light bringer? It's you are wrong, Eddie. I mean, we're going to see that if if people listen to our original versus remake this week, they'll know how wrong you are. Make up your own minds. Watch it. If you've never seen either, watch them and tell me. Tell. I'm not even going to say what we. You have to watch it. You're going to see. Um, yeah, let's do these trailers, man. Oh, this right. one trailer. So I think there was only one real trailer this week that was of any um, real interest, and that's called The Devil All the Time, starring Tom Holland. And Robert Patterson. And Bill Skarsgård, who is It, the It Clown. We've got Sebastian Stan, who's a Winter Soldier. We've got Mia Wiskowski. I can never pronounce her last name, but she's in a bunch of stuff. She's awesome. Oops. We've got the guy with the little face who was in that crappy um, uh, Charlie's Ferong Netflix movie. The old guard. Yeah, that was terrible. We've got Riley Cohen, who's like the only Elvis offspring that's successful right now. This is his grand daughter granddaughter great grand granddaughter yeah yeah she's doing good yeah you wouldn't think but the only the only one to really make anything out of that family and none of them singers did you hear the, the grandson commit suicide sorry, i think sorry. her brother wait, wait, hold on which which family is this elvis elvis i didn't even know elvis had any apart from priscilla that, that there were any other children oh, yeah. or yeah riley cohen the female in not Pris- oh sorry not priscilla priscilla was the wife i can't remember what yeah. the child the one who married michael jackson yeah, i think yeah, that's the yeah. only reason i know her and Riley, I think, is her daughter. Right. And her son, I believe, yeah, committed suicide like a couple of weeks ago. It's really sad. Oh, yeah. I think he was that only in his 20s. The, that yeah, it the, was. That didn't not, hit the news at all. Not like big mainstream, but it was on yeah. like sites and stuff. But You'd yeah. kind of think like Elvis's grandson committing suicide would be like front page news type thing. I guess he wasn't, because he yeah. wasn't famous on his own right. I guess he hadn't really, he was still young though. He was like early 20s, looked just like him, which is crazy. Maybe oh, that was really? part of the pressure. Of trying to live up to Elvis being a spitting image. But anyway, so what's, so what's the the pressure? You have all that family money because he made a ton of money after he died. But you got to achieve something on your own. You just kind of like no. Uh, once you're rich, you don't have to achieve anything. Yes, you do because people no. just don't show you. No one respects you if you who don't cares? do anything on your own. Who you don't want? When you, who cares about respect when you've got all that money? You're just such a superficial <laughs> human being, Mo. It's not all about money. Come on, man. It's, Listen, mate, anyone who says that is poor. Rich, <laughs> no, rich only, no, rich people say that. Rich no, no, people no, say money no, doesn't only, make you no, happy. No, no, only poor people say money doesn't make you happy, right? Because they make, try and make themselves feel better. I know because I say it. <laughs> <laughs> of, course it make, it, of course it makes you better. It makes yeah, everything better. True, true. Um, Jason Clark, who's in the lot, one of the last Terminator ones, one before last of his shit, Mia Goff. Anyway. So yeah, the devil all the time. This looked really good, but I don't really know what it's about. And and I have no problem with that, right? Because like you said, the trailer itself looks really intriguing, looks spooky as hell, um, and and it just makes you want to watch it. 
and I don't know what it's about because that's what you want to learn when you watch the film, right? Yeah, it's like in the Deep South about evangelicalism and family rivalries and histories and just start, I, I have no idea. But yeah, it looks good. It looks interesting. I want to check it out regardless. Uh, that's a Netflix film. Um, so it's coming like uh, September 16th. Yeah, this is like a proper movie. This, this, this is something that should be in the cinemas if there were cinemas to go to. Are you saying that Netflix don't have proper films? They did. Yeah. They started, and then they kind of yeah. got lazy and started just making <laughs> these crappy things, like, you know. I think today, because I, I was just browsing before we started, I think that Power Pill film's just come out. Oh, is it? Okay, I, I saw one review. Wasn't that keen. But I'm no. going to watch it and give it a go. Right. That's cool, cool. Have you got your ticket for... um? Tenant? Oh, you know what? I, I need to book one now. I, obviously, I'm now on holiday for the next couple of weeks, so uh, hopefully I should be fairly flexible as to like a daytime showing. Yes, got a ticket booked. And Raj is going, so don't, guys, you're going to get your review. Don't worry, we won't ruin it for guys in the States. Um, don't get a chance to watch it until September sometime, but yeah, we'll do like a non-spoiler. Probably as a separate video as well, maybe. But I can't, I can't wait. I'm actually curious to see how the cinemas have laid out and what they're doing with all this it, it, i'll tell you what if if i go to a daytime viewing like on a thursday or something the cinema should look no different from the last time i was there because I, I normally like take a day off go on the friday two o'clock showing or something and the cinema is totally empty but they're going to change the seats though aren't they? when they're going to remove seats and i don't think they're actually removing seats though are they i think are they like blocking things off if they're lazy, I've seen photos of cinemas where they've literally removed oh, really? seats from inside, yeah. How do they sell tickets then? Because just say like they remove seats, but like a family of six turn up, but they've like only in blocks of four. Yes, uh, point. <laughs> that is a point. Yeah. yeah. So they have like a guy who goes and that straps more seats in. <laughs> that is true. But uh, yeah, I actually don't know what time because I didn't actually book it myself unless Thingy do it. So I, they've probably gone through a midnight. We shouldn't have bothered with that. Why do we do midnight? But you reckon it's going to be full? That's, that's actually, actually, no, I'm, I'm actually well, happy. They're only, well, they're only going to sell some like 25% of um, the capacity, screenings. Yeah. So, unless, so un unless the idea is to make up that money, they show it on like four times as many screens. Yeah. So instead of having like one midnight showing, you have four midnight showings. Which they can do because there's no other yeah. movies up, really. Or you, or you stagger it a little bit so you don't have everyone queuing outside at the same time. And I think like New Mutants comes out literally just after that, like a few days after. So That film's going to get lost in that. It could do, but I'm going to see it. I will see it. You're getting that review, guys. You're going to have two trips to the cinema in like just in a couple of days. Cool, blimey. Give me Russian that COVID. Roulette. Give me that COVID. <laughs> Russian roulette. So let's get into this. Fresh Prince of Bel-Air is getting a dark and gritty reboot. Please explain Bel -Air. this to me. Explain well, this to me. There's a, trailer, I... there's a trailer in the link that really does yeah. explain it, but I'll explain it to you more. You don't have to yeah. watch it. Basically, the, the, another opening of Fresh Prince. Yeah. You know, he's in, he's in uh, Philadelphia playing basketball, gets in trouble. Little, little scuffle goes on. His mum says, okay, I've had enough of you getting in trouble. You're going to stay with your uncle and auntie in uh, Bel Air. Yeah. Imagine that, but serious. A, a poor kid in Philly, getting in trouble in the streets. And they actually have a, there's like a short film that this is based on. Basically, this guy yeah. made a short film. The whole premise of what I've been saying, but serious, yeah. where he gets in trouble, gets arrested from the fight in the basketball court, got, finds out he's got a gun in his uh, bag. And his mom's like, I can't deal with this. You, you, you can't stay no more. I've got to get you out of here. I'm going to send you to live with your uncle. And it all does it like this dark indie movie. And you kind of think, huh, it does work. You know what? That sounds like it's great at a pitch, but like when you sit down to kind of watch it, especially if you're probably somebody who lived through the '90s, right? And and, and I watch and I, I don't know if you'd be able to make that switch. But they did it. Like I said, it's the the short film is yeah. out there, and yeah, you see him living in Bel Air, doesn't adjust. You know, battling against the uncle, really battling against their um, what's his cousin? The fucking. Will. It, Not no. Will. Um, oh, oh my God! I forgot his name now. Oh, Carlton. Carlton. Yeah, like say you don't belong here. You're just from the streets. Like, See, why the, are you? The best thing about Carlton is like the fact that he used to do like the the yeah <laughs> the Carlton dance. 
<laughs> but yeah, so it's got all of that, but serious. And it's weird, but off of the strength of the little short film, you know, they're actually making it into a real show. I don't know how long it's going to be. It could be like a short thing, like a little 12 episodes thing. Will Smith is producing it. So we were wondering what they were going to do. We heard about there was going to be a reboot, but it's not going to be a sitcom, which I think is the right thing because you can't really make it another sitcom and expect it to work. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure a, a, a gritty reboot is, is something that entices me in, to be honest. I'm just curious to see how many people are going to get into this. It depends how gritty it is, right? Are, are, we, talking, are we talking streaming service gritty or are we talking network TV gritty? Yeah, I don't know where it's going to be. Oh, this must be an NBC thing, right? Because that's probably. where the original show was. So this is probably going to end up on um, uh, Peacock. on Peacock. Yeah, they need content. It's a shame. Maybe they could have taken the approach like Atlanta. But Atlanta does have comedy in it. But presentation-wise, it's like a yeah. serious, well-shot. Which I need to go back to, because that was really good, that show. I haven't actually watched Atlanta. It is on my like, list of things to watch. That's another one. It's too much. I wish I could like multiply myself into like two or three of me. What you want is like, don't, oh, surely you, I would have thought you, you probably have like one thing going on the TV, another thing going on the uh, laptop, another third thing going on your iPad. I've, I've tried that a few times <laughs> and it works for, a, for about an hour or two and then it just becomes like overload. I can't do it. But yeah, guys, check that out. I think you can find it on YouTube. So it's called Bel Air. Short film. Right, I might have to check that out. Give it a look. Go through more. Right, so Zac Efron, um, who I didn't realise is now actually in his 30s, right? He's no longer wow. like a 20-something. How old are we? <laughs> High school musical. <laughs> How, that, was, that was a year ago. <laughs> yeah, on, yeah, but it's quite common for like 30-year-olds to play like high school students in, in just, Hollywood, right? This feels mad though, like what? Yeah. Britney Spears is like in her late 30s now and I remember when she was 17. It's, 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 it's crazy. Absolutely. Well, I think that Hollywood actually has skewed my ability to actually tell you what, like I say, a 14 or a 15-year-old should actually look like because to me, they all look like fully developed adults. <laughs> That's social media, man. They just the makeup, everything. It's just no, no, no. It's not that. I mean, the fact that because all the shows that we watch, like like Buffy the Vampire Slayer and all of that, all of those actors were in like their late twenties yeah. when That's they were true. doing that. And, and so when you actually see a real fifteen-year-old, you're kind of like, that must be a ten-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I think I started with like Twenty One Jump Street, innit? They were like all in their late twenties playing high school. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Um, so Zac Efron um, is to star in a Disney Plus remake um, of Three Men and a Baby. And a uh, bonus point or bonus piece of info here, I always forget, it's, and it always comes as a surprise to me, that original film was directed Let by Leonard Nimoy. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. So crazy. Spark. Crazy. Um, I'm not entirely sure this film warrants a remake. However, having said that, yeah. it is, um, it's about... 35 odd years since that came out right wow. and, so and society has changed dramatically right yeah. so whereas it might have been really funny in in the original to see three men who were all like single carefree party goers suddenly have to raise a child i guess in this day and age that the family dynamic is so different they could probably tell almost a different story very much so. There's still a controversy because, like, yeah, you've got gay couples, but these guys weren't gay. One of them probably will be in this one, yeah, or maybe yeah. two of them. Or, or two of them could guys, be like a gay, yeah. But three guys is still something that's going to be like, huh, what the fuck? And well, it's a girl guys as well. living together. Yeah. Um, See, I would be into this if it wasn't Disney Plus because I think something like this, if it remains a comedy, should be like, you know, Bad Neighbors, Seth Rogen's Bad Neighbors, and Twenty One yep. Jump Street. It should be that type of comedy. Disney Plus, right. you can't really do that. So it's just going to be a yeah, sort of generic run-of-the-mill It's it, well, do, do, So I haven't seen the original film in such a long time. I actually felt like I'd like to, I wanted to watch it after this. And I, actually, and I was a kid when I watched it. I haven't seen it as an adult. But I do actually remember enjoying it. I thought it was quite yeah, funny. I remember it. Ted Danson and... Um, Steve Gutenberg and Tom Selleck. Tom Selleck, yeah. yeah. Power. Those guys, that was a... Yeah. Big stars well, that's that's it, yeah. So back, those guys were at the height of their fame back yeah. when they did it. I mean, um, I know Zac Efron is, is a huge character or, or big actor. There was, two, you, there was a sequel as well, wasn't there? There was, a it was Three Men and a Little Lady. And apparently for years, 
they tried to get a third one done called um, Three Men and a Bride. But they could just oh. never get that all, all signed, sealed and dotted. It's a shame. It's a shame. Yeah, I don't know. Like I said, man, it, it needed to be a, something, more, something with more teeth. But on Disney Plus, you're not going to do yeah. that. So it's just going to be yeah. generic family comedy, which I don't I, think I'm really ass- works nowadays. I, I'm assuming the original is still there. I it's don't. probably on Disney Plus. Don't know. I have to have a look for that. Yeah. Well, you say like family comedy doesn't work, but I'm assuming for people who actually have families, i.e., not you and I, who are like a couple who have a few children at home, I can kind of see that this would be a film they'd get round, watch, and, and have a well, good, clean time with. Well, when I say don't work, I mean, they just don't. Like, when's the last time you saw a comedy which is PG that was funny, that made you laugh? Even um, Will Ferrell, like his films tend to be more um, a little skew, a little higher. Than oh PG, yeah, right? I mean none, none, none of Will Ferrell's films, even the ones that are PG thirteen, you probably wouldn't want to watch with um, with with a mum or something. Yeah, the family ones just don't really they don't hit the mark anymore. I don't know, uh, I can't think of any. But you know, we'll see, we'll see. But I wonder who the other two are going to be though. Who the other two? Uh, yeah, I can't guys. think of. I, I'm sure because it's not my demographic, but I can't think of any other stars of like his age. Hey man, you got. We just saw a trailer for a movie which has other guys. It could be like a Tom Holland, Robert Tom Patterson. Holland. You know, there's a whole bunch. Do you think like Tom Holland or Robert Patterson would want to be on a Disney Plus remake? They're on a Netflix of- movie. That's a Netflix movie is a Netflix film, right? This is a remake of a of a Leonard Nimoy movie. Tom, Tom Holland or has already sold his soul. Well, not <laughs> technically Disney, not Sony, but you never know. He'd be willing. Yeah. yeah. It's it's it's. Uh, I think this is going to be the trend now. They're going to look in their back catalogue and just remake everything, aren't they? Why not? That's you got a whole two generations now. Because we say thirty five years, that last one. Yeah. You have got like two generations of people who haven't even seen it. That that could just that have a whole like, new one. You've probably got a whole generation of people that are like, who the fuck is Steve Gutenberg, Tom Selleck, and Ted Thompson? There you go. Dude, what police, you know Police Academy is just round the corner, that remake. It's definitely oh. going to happen at some point. It has and, to happen. And you know what the worst thing about that remake will be? They'll make it like a PG movie, and you'll be like, why? Yeah. 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 I miss Steve Gutenberg. I used to like really get excited when um, when you'd see a new movie starring Steve Gutenberg. <laughs> <Why? laughs> well, like, hey, I was a kid, and he was like, he was Mahoney from Police Academy. That's yeah, that's true. That's true. Yes, and uh, what Cocoon as well as number one. <laughs> Jeez, when was the last time you watched that? <laughs> so that's yeah, legit. When I was a little yeah. kid, legit. that's like a movie full of old people. <laughs> <laughs> I think the last old person died as well, like months or two ago. One and of the it biggest stars. Surprise me! Yeah, I remember when uh, was it Don Amici? When I remember when he passed away, they they kept playing uh, like clips of Cocoon. Damn, damn. So Tron Free got a title. What is it, Mo? I have no idea. Are you you put the story down. I didn't put it down. Did you put I, it down. Did I put it down? Yeah. Oh damn! I have no idea. Let's find out. Maybe what? I should ask him. Apparently, Jared Leto apparently let slip what the title was most likely going to be. Oh, right. Um, don't know what that is, though, because I didn't write it down. But anyway, uh, I don't know how... Does this excite you? I don't know. I like Tron. I like the Tron world, but it's been so long. Not, not so long, but we're going to have another director now with another vision. Is it going to carry the, the cool aesthetic from the last film? Is it going to be mainly in the real world or within the computer? Are they going to continue the story? Because it left as last, the Tron legacy was a cliffhanger, you know, with a computer program crossing over into the real world. Yeah. Are they going to complete that story or are they just going to do some other stuff with Jared Leto in the, inside the, mother, the motherboard, whatever it was. So, so, so we're going to bring up um, Westworld again now, are we? Because essentially that's what it looks like what they want to do. Kind of. Um, apparently um, he tweeted, it's going to be, fucking hell, this webpage I've gone to, the amount of ads are just popping up. Um, on an, on an iPad as well. Um, apparently, it's going to be called um, Tron Ares. Tron Ares. A R E S. God, Ares. God of War. Is that who Leto's going to be, or is he going to be the hero? Do you enjoy watching Jared Leto movies? Considering that he's notoriously a bit of a dick, just like um, as a stuck-up, oh, aren't I amazing? I'm a genius sort of way. 
I see this is the thing, right? I don't really follow a lot of actors and, and what they're like. So it always comes as a surprise to me Probably when I find best. out when I find out stuff about them. Like now that I know uh, Vince Vaughn uh, is a huge like Trump uh, fanatic, I, I find it really difficult to watch his films because I just look at yeah. him and see asshole. Um, that's so probably that, the, that's the best why way. I don't, yeah, I don't like knowing what these people are like because I just want to watch film. I have no interest in what they're like as a person. Should we really support Mulan? With everything that's going on in China, with what China are doing, even though this isn't technically a Chinese product it's yeah. done for china and its success depends on whether disney will make more of this sort of stuff because it's made purely to tailor to the chinese market primarily they're getting it for the right. cinema but also there was the whole thing with the actress she she came out supporting the police in hong kong putting yeah. down the people who were protesting like should we, and there's a whole thing in China of boycotting yeah, yeah, Mulan. Uh, yeah, so so I know um I I know I've heard this about other actors as well. Apparently, like Jackie Chan as well, which which makes me actually think. So if you just divorce yourself from the the situation and and the uh, the theatrics about some people's replies, if you take a logical step back, I would imagine some of these actors and actresses don't really have a choice in 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 showing support, right? Because you got to remember in in China. If you say something against the government, chances are something's going to happen to you or your family. I'd, I'd say you're right. The thing is, this wasn't like a statement with video saying, I support the government. Like, this was just yeah. them tweeting. Like, I don't think anyone was pressuring them. How do you know this. they weren't being pressured? This was just... Uh, have you actually How read do you what how do you know the government aren't started putting the, the pressure on movie stars? Because uh, Jackie Chan did the same thing a few months ago, right? He, he was basically praising the police as well. I understand Jackie, but I don't see yeah. how... I don't think Jackie she's grew up. Enough. Jackie grew up in Hong Kong. True. Oh, actually, ooh, was, the, the, what, was the, the school that he went to in Hong Kong, though? I don't know if it was. Uh, was it not in Hong Kong? Is it not like a Hong Kong they're, grown? They're called, no, it's Peking Opera School, so... yeah. I think that might, I, I don't know, I could be wrong. I usually know quite a lot but when it comes to Jackie, but not this. I don't know yeah. whether the peaking up schools were in Hong it, Kong. I, I, it, 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 without like just being sensationalist, I would like to hope that for a lot of these posts, because she, she also spends a lot of her time in the US, that there has been pressure applied on them to do this. Mm. But she, you think she's follow up then with all of this hate, that she'd say something else and be like, no, to dig in, no. But, but One you little... can't, though, can you? You absolutely can't. It's like, you don't do this, something might happen to you. Something no, might I mean, happen to your family. In support, like, to back up, yeah. to dig in, to say, no, I, you can hate me all over. No, she was yeah. like, I'm going to say this. Come, uh, I'm going to come after me if you want, or something like that. Yeah. It was, I don't know. But does Mulan deserve our support? Are you going to pay to watch it? I'm not. I'm going to watch it. I ain't going to pay yeah. for it. But what about all the other people that worked on that movie? That's the moral thing. Like, this isn't about Chinese people. It's about their government. So this is the moral high ground about yeah. that. This so, can take the hit. So are you going to pay your twenty nine ninety nine to watch it? I'm, I'll probably wait <laughs> till it's on Disney+. Plus, and then I might subscribe. <laughs> but it will be on Disney+, Plus for twenty nine ninety nine. Yeah, but it won't be there to stream as part of your subscription. You don't even have Disney Plus, so... I know, I don't, know. So maybe I'll do my seven-day free trial when that comes out. Well, I wonder how long that gap's going to be between the rental and the actual just putting it up. I can't imagine it's going to be more than, like, 90-odd days. Um, yeah, so, next story. Uh, Netflix. Avatar The Last Airbender creators of the original animated show. They've walked away from the Netflix's live action remake of the series yeah i i saw this story break last night i've not had an opportunity to actually see what's going on so break it down i'm assuming created differences that's what they've said that's what uh i believe only netflix have responded and they said that you know you know the typical stuff we yeah. respect their decision they walked away of creative differences um we've got a great team installed and they're gonna we're confident they're gonna go and create a great vision of the show but you've never watched i Air have Bender, never though, watched no it's, I should have got my buddy because I managed to convince him to watch it and he loved it. It's a great show. Really good. Like it, it, yeah, first you watch it, you think it's just this kid's thing, like really kiddie. But once it gets into the characters and it gets deeper, it's such a Hold on a minute. So you're saying when you first watched it, you weren't really into it, but you carried on watching it and you enjoyed it. 
No, it feels kiddie. It's not like Lower Decks more. I don't know what you're going for. It just feels like a kid show because it was a Nickelodeon thing. But yeah. once the layers of the story get, get going and it gets to the deeper levels of, you know, the, 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 the Fire Kingdom and all of the Prince Zuko and all of that stuff, it becomes such a great yeah. show. So um, heartbroken over the movie, the last how, movie was the garbage. But How yeah, many this, episodes are there in the original series? It plays out over uh, books. Like, it's a book. Yeah. How many books was it? Were there three books? I haven't rewatched it in a long time. I think there's like three or four books for each. Right. So we're not talking like a one piece where there's like 800 episodes you've got. No, no, no. It doesn't, doesn't go that long. It doesn't go that long. But yeah, it's a great show. Um, yeah, I'm worried. The original creators, they're the creative minds that had the creative vision for this. What is it that caused them to step away? What did Netflix or whoever these other producers want that went against their vision. I was going to say, that's quite strange for Netflix, right? Because you, what you genuinely tend to hear from other creators is that Netflix are very hands-off. They don't generally get involved. They, you, once they've sorted out the finances, you may hear from them once or twice, but yeah. you're then left to it. Maybe. They're hearing the criticisms for, you know, <laughs> that, that we've made for some of their shittier stuff and now they're actually trying to put a bit of quality control on some of it. So what actually is this remake then? So they've got the original series. So is this like a, a next live generation? Is it a, oh, it's a live action. Yeah. So Is this something that could translate to live action? It, it could because the movie showed that as bad as the movie was, the M. Light Shyamalan Langalang movie, as bad as it was, it showed that it technically could be achieved because uh, it there are different tribes in the world there's like waterbenders people who have control over water it's all martial art based but they have control over water certain people some people have um, control over wind people have control over fire and control over earth so yeah there's four books in the series and the and avatar he has all of those abilities of all right. four elements and he brings balance to the world but the avatar's been missing for like hundreds of years so the world is out of balance the fire kingdom are just going around like nazis just killing every just destroying and enslaving everybody yeah. and then the avatar finally appears and it's his job to kind of re, regain balance in this universe but technically it showed the film showed that you can do it the effects are there yeah. with the ability but they just effed it up with the ethnicity of their casting and just a shitty story the way that they told it so yeah it can be done Oh, oh, okay. Um, well, I, might have to, I might have to check out an episode or two now of, of the original yeah. cartoon. It takes a couple of episodes, so give it that. What you're saying about me with Lower Decks, you have to give to Avatar. Oh, I'm going to watch one episode, and if I don't like it, I'm going <laughs> to rant and rave about how rubbish this show is and how it's only for kids. Uh, yeah. So, um, <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, I'm worried because what is it that they changed then? It has to be something that they dug their heels in the fort. We can't be a part of, We don't want our names attached to this. We have to walk away. Yeah, that, that's a very odd one. And I, I wonder if we'll ever find out, right? Because some of these things are, Ooh, are, are basically it. behind an NDA. Yeah, but you, you'll see what the end product looks like. But you may not know what the creators, um, what loggerheads, because essentially you're not supposed to talk about these things. Yeah, it, has to, it has to be something major, though, man. It has to be a change in a character, someone's orientation, their goals, their aim. Maybe a change of a character. I, I don't know. It could be anything, but I'm I'm gonna check it out. But yeah. I'm I'm sad that they're not part of it. Shame, shame. Next one for you, Mo. So Martin Scorsese signs a multi-year deal with the devil. Sorry, I mean a multi-year deal with <laughs> Apple TV Plus to produce film and TV projects. What the fuck? So Martin Scorsese's works are now going to be behind yet another paywall. Yeah, after um, all that bitching about all of this streaming platform stuff, hey, he's a cinema guy. He only wants his stuff to be in the cinemas. He's just decided, fuck it. Right? So the, the, hold on. He signed a multi-year... How old is Scorsese? That's what I'm about to say. Like He's probably like, I haven't got much, many years left. I have all these ideas I want to get out. Why battle and fight against all these studios? Let me just... Sign is still working, guaranteed to just make all my, have my ideas out there, film, TV, and screw it. So basically, as part of the deal, um, his productions will produce and direct both films and television projects for the streaming service. So I, I'm guessing he won't be involved in all of them, but his production company will essentially be making some, some other stuff. Hmm. 
But I bet you he's some. I bet you he'll do a, a couple there because he has one major. I think it started out there was a rumor that his next movie that he wanted to make was yeah. going to be with Apple. So well, yeah. So this, yeah. So, so Killers of the Flower Moon will will land on uh, Apple Plus after yeah. it's distributed in theaters. Yeah. So I'm guessing this is just like a, a an extension of that relationship. This is a really strange thing, right? So to essentially the, the entry level to watch a Scorsese movie, right? So if you want to watch it at home on your TV, um, unless you've got like a brand new TV, you probably don't have a, or, or a fire TV box or something, you know, you need some additional hardware. Yeah. Yeah. You need a yeah. Apple TV. Yeah. Uh, Apple TV. Uh, they've got the Apple app and the fire stick. My, uh, LG. So I have an LG TV. Um, they haven't backported the Apple app. To, to, the, to, to my one. So I think newer ones, you get it, right? Yeah. So this really, you know, it's the difference between Netflix. <laughs> so but you're telling you old now. Well, it is a 2017 model. So it's not old as in ah. it's old. I but it's when like, you bought it, man, and this yeah. was like cutting edge. To, oh, it's, yeah. it's basically sad. <laughs> so the TV itself is still really good, right? And essentially, this is why I always say, don't buy a TV for the smart stuff because that smart stuff will get really old. Buy a nice streaming box that's a fraction of the price that you can replace easily. Yeah. Yeah. Scorsese sold, sells his soul. Oh, well, oh, well. Sell, he sold to Steve Jobs for a pot mm. of gold at the end of the rainbow. So, geez, is that just pretty much it for this week? Um, it is. Um, we do have a Instagram from uh, one of our regulars. Um, he has more questions for you, Eddie, as to which ones of these would you get rid of? Because we know you like these. Give it to me. Come on, come on. Give it right. to me. Okay, so um, The Dark Knight, The Winter Soldier, or Spider-Man 2? Oh, that is... Oh, dear. I think Spider-Man 2, really. I think so, too. Oh, damn. Yeah, I have to. Yeah. I have to ask Cause, you. Because The Dark Knight is a Dark Knight. The Winter Soldier is probably one of the best Yeah. Um, of that whole series. And there's so um, much more in there of you know the characters. So many other things going on that it just It's more satisfying. Yeah. Um, uh, Dark, uh, Ozark, or Stranger Things? Stranger Things. I would probably agree with that, actually. Because... Um, Dark is just too good. Yeah. And, and Ozark is probably something I'd actually watch again at some point in the future. Yeah, yeah. I uh, enjoy Stranger Things, but yeah, the, the Dark's just too masterful. It's, it's the grown-up Stranger Things, basically. Yeah. Um, John Wick, Speed, or The Matrix? Uh, speed. Oh, I'd probably agree there. Although, I was just thinking the other day, it's been years since I watched Speed, so maybe I need to watch that again soon. It holds up. Huh? It holds up. It's fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, bet, I bet it's still probably a fun film. You get a jacked uh, Keanu Reeves, which you never see. <laughs> um, the Boys, Watchmen, oh. or The Expanse? Oh, you bastard. Oh, you bastard. How could you? That's uh, not fair. It's not fair. I... I would probably have to say, out of those three, as difficult it is, I think Watchmen would probably be the one that goes. Oh, dear. Because The Boys is very good. The Expanse is extremely damn good. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I have more invested in Watchmen, though, because of being more familiar with the original story of it and how it all connects together. Made it all that all the more satisfying for me to watch. I love the boys, but I love Expanse. It's gonna have to be an ip dip. Oh, get you are not it. Oh, Expanse. No, I can't oh. let Expanse go. No, 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 Eddie. Uh, I said it. Dip, dip, dip. It's gonna have to be Expanse then. That it's means you way. can't watch. You can't watch season five then. I can't. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> Damn you, um, camera. That's too cruel. That's too cruel. It must be obvious one that has to go. It's easy. It's an easy choice. Uh, Rocky Balboa, Darth Vader, or the Terminator? Darth. Who reckon? I would have said Rocky Balboa. You, when's the last time you watched all the Rocky films? Darth Vader is an iconic character of cinema. So is Rocky Balboa. They yeah, built a statue. I, I, he I, has a I, statue. 
I can take it or leave it. When's the last time you... Oh, come on, man. You, you're not a man if you don't watch those Rocky films and feel the adrenaline in your veins as he's having that boxing match, getting beaten down, and you're feeling, come on, Rocky, get up. You can do it. I, I, the poor guy has taken so much of like damage to his head. Um, and then lastly, uh, this one might be contentious, is Bitrix the Bride, Ellen Ripley, or Sarah Connor? Oh, oh. That's a Be- really, really tough one. And I actually don't know. Beatrix. Do you reckon? Yeah. Sarah Connor, Sarah Connor. Like, sure. No, like, for one and two, just for Terminator 1 and 2, Sarah Connor, you can't dismiss. Actually, no, Sarah Connor was only really good in number two. Number one, she was just a damsel. Like, oh, help me. But the bride. But the bride was kicking off from the get-go. And it's you know her film. I'm going to have to go with Sarah Connor. I'll tell you one. I, that's what I might oh. be interested to do. As, as much as it pains me. But then is that, can we include Sarah Connor from the TV show as well? Well, Sarah Connor, Sarah Connor, right? And that show was called The Connor Chronicles. But I didn't like that bloody show anyway. It was all right. Nah, yeah, I think... It, well, there we go. It was only all right. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I like, think... it, was, it, was, it was so all right, all right, I didn't even bother watching season two. Yeah. Yeah, Connor's going to have to go. Yeah. Brad kicks ass from the get-go. There we go. And Ripley's Ripley, man. You can't, you can't turn your back on Ripley. There you go. The original action hero. Yeah. Right, we are titles. done then from content. How can they get in contact with us more? Well, folks, if you want to email us, we are at tatmpodcast at gmail.com. Please do email and tell Eddie that he's completely wrong about Lower Decks. Um, if you want to follow us on um, Instagram, we are Talking at Movies. And if you want to follow us on Twitter, we are Talking Movies 3. Don't forget, guys, YouTube, Voltron Network, two separate words. You can watch this. You can watch our original versus remake. This week is Evil Dead, the original Sam Raimi one from 19. Do you remember them all? 80... 1981, if I remember correctly. And then the 2013, I want to say. Probably 83 now we say that. Hold on, I'll tell you. It's close enough, you know what yeah, we compare those two. And, um, oh, 1981, I was right. Woohoo! Nice. And then we've also got DC versus uh, Marvel with me and Uz doing big things. And oof, I want to, I want to, I want to, we've uh, after I post up the next original versus remake, I want to do The Mummy. The yeah. Mummy? Which that's Mummy? A free, that's a free movie one, man. That'll be so the what, old Mummy school. From the 1930s. That'll be an old school one. That'll be yeah. then the Brendan Fraser one and then Tom Cruise one. I actually watched the Brendan Fraser one not long ago. I think like last year. Oh, yes. I thought you hadn't seen it. What, the original? What, the Brendan Fraser one? Yeah, yeah, everyone's seen that. I went to cinema to watch that. Dude, so many films that you should have seen you haven't seen. So don't act like that. It should be surprising that I think you haven't seen it. <laughs> yeah, but that wasn't like a, you know, like a genre-defining, like, iconic movie. So obviously I've seen it. <laughs> <laughs> I wait for the hype to die down on those like iconic films. So, so when I go in, I'm not disappointed. The hype and decades upon yeah. decades. Exactly. <laughs> They're far more enjoyable that way. So when I eventually get around to watching The Godfather, the hype will have completely died down. Oh my God, that's, that's upsetting. But yeah, I want to do that one at some point. Anyway, yeah, next week's original versus remake will be Vacation. National Lampoon, yes. Vacation and Vacation, a semi-sequel reboot. Sequel, Same. remake, reimagining. Yeah. So, guys, from me, the race. From me, Mo. See you guys next week. See you, folks. Later.